In this video, we're going to take a look at what happens when we add transmission line between a transmitter and an antenna. I'll give you the answer very quickly, and then we'll actually go look at why, and actually go make some measurements and show it. But the quick three-part answer is that the SWR does not change as you add or subtract transmission line length between your transmitter and the antenna. And of course, this is assuming that the line is not part of the antenna. And many times that's not the case. Uh, oftentimes the shield of the coax becomes part of the counterpoise system for the antenna, so changing the line length may have some effect on SWR, but uh, if the line is com completely not part of the antenna, the SWR will not change. We'll show you why in a moment. However, the impedance looking into the line does change as you change the line length. So you could say, how does the impedance change without the SWR change? Well, we'll take a look at this on the Smith chart, the perfect tool to look at this, and we'll show you why. Now, the other thing that uh, people get surprised at is that the apparent resonant frequencies of the antenna can move around as you add or subtract line length. And, of course, that's assuming that the resonant point is not at the perfect uh, center of the Smith chart right at 50 ohms. Now, remember that resonance is only defined as when the impedance is purely resistive. There's no reactive component. So that could appear, you know, it could be 40 ohm resistive, 55 ohm resistive, 100 ohm resistive, etc. All those are resonant points. But and also it's important to remember that the resonant point is not always where you have the lowest SWR. So don't confuse the lowest SWR or the minimum in the SWR as being the resonant point of the antenna because that's not always the case. Now here's a, a simple plot of, say, a fictitious antenna with uh, some uh, starting line length and plotting the impedance on a Smith chart from low frequency to high frequency. And I've just highlighted three points on that chart. So let's take a look at the impedance looking into the end of a line after we add about a tenth of a wavelength of transmission line. Now our assumptions here are that we're dealing with lossless line and that the line is not a significant part of the antenna. When we add or subtract transmission line, we're effectively rotating uh, the impedance around the center of the Smith chart, assuming that the center of the Smith chart is equal to Z0 or the characteristic impedance of the line. So if we take our original three points and this curve of our original uh, sweep of the antenna, uh, we essentially can draw these imaginary circles uh, centered at the Z0 point for each of those points. These circles are known as constant SWR circles. So as we add or subtract line length, the impedance represented by any point on the curve rotates around its own constant SWR circle. When we add line length, we rotate clockwise. We subtract line length, we rotate counterclockwise. The outer axes of the Smith chart are actually calibrated in uh, length of line in wavelengths. You can see there they both show 0.25 over here. This one here is decreasing. This one here is increasing. At this end of the uh, chart, we see they're both at zero. What this indicates is one complete trip around the Smith chart is equal to a half a wavelength in line. So what that means is that if you use a transmission line that's exactly a half wavelength long at your operating frequency, the impedance looking into the line is exactly the same as the impedance looking into the antenna directly. At any other line length that is not an even half wavelength multiple, you're going to have an impedance that is not the same as the impedance looking into the line. But, as we mentioned, the SWR does not change because we're simply rotating around these constant SWR circles. So let's take our example of adding a tenth of a wavelength to the line length. So we start with point A, we can bring that out to the outer axis, add a tenth of a wavelength to, we see we're a little bit past 0.22, we'll rotate down to a little bit past 0.32, and that's our new point for the impedance at that frequency looking into the transmission line. We do the same thing for point B. We rotate about a tenth of a wavelength out this way, and that's our new point for B. And do the same thing for point C, and pick our new point for C. Now you noticed each time I said we're rotating about a tenth of a wavelength. And the reason for that is that that transmission line is only going to be a tenth of a wavelength at one frequency. Let's say it was at frequency for A. When we go up to frequency B, the higher frequency means a shorter wavelength, so that fixed line length is going to be electrically a little bit longer than a tenth. We go up again to a higher frequency C, that line length is going to be a little bit longer again than a tenth. So the effect is the curve 
rotates around and stretches slightly because we're going to be rot the higher frequencies are going to rotate further around the chart. So you do get a slight change in the shape of the curve uh, just because the line length in terms of the number of wavelengths changes with frequency as well. And again, this is assuming a lossless transmission line. If there were losses, these circles actually start to spiral inwards. And uh, also assumes that, again, that the line is not a significant part of the antenna. So let's go take a look at this with the VNA and see what we're talking about. So here's our starting point. I've got a 20 meter vertical antenna uh, hooked up through a piece of coax uh, to the VNA. Uh, we can see the SWR plot here, minimum SWR at about 14.245 megahertz, and then this is our curve of the complex impedance of that antenna, sweeping from 13.7 to 14.7 megahertz. Now in my case here, the coax shield is a small portion of the counterpoise for the antenna, so you may notice a small shift in the lowest SWR point as we start adding coax length. Now I've added about 36 inches, or just under one meter of RG8X coax, which at 14.2 megahertz represents about 0.056 wavelengths of line length. So you notice that our whole curve has rotated slightly clockwise around the center of the Smith chart. You'll also notice that we actually cross the center axis of the Smith chart twice. So actually two resonant points. And again, resonance doesn't mean minimum SWR, Resonance just means that we have no reactants. I've just added a second 36 inch or about one meter long length of line and we can see we've rotated that curve a little bit further. And again, our SWR curve has not changed. Now this is after adding another 36 inch length of coax and we've rotated our curve a little bit further. Again, you'll notice there's a slight change in the shape of this curve because the line length in terms of number of wavelengths is a little different uh, for these, each of the frequencies along this curve. But you also notice again that the SWR plot really has not changed. So let's play each of those four scenarios out in unison. I'll just merge from one to the other and you can visualize how this curve is rotating around. This was our starting point. This is after adding one section of 36 inch line or about one meter of line length. This is with an additional six feet or just under two meters of additional coax. Now this is after adding another 36 inch length. So I hope this video has taught you a little bit about what happens when you add or subtract line length between a transmitter and an antenna. Now of course if the antenna is perfectly matched to the transmission line, meaning its impedance equals the transmission line impedance, then the line length doesn't matter a bit. But if the antenna is not a perfect 50 ohms, it's somewhere else in complex impedance, the impedance looking into that line will change with line length but the SWR sh will not, provided that the line itself is not part of the antenna system. So again, I hope you learned something. If you liked the video, uh, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. Tell your friends, and thanks again as always for watching.